So I want to have people have an experience of delight, have people have an experience of the profound beauty of nature which resonates through them, and then to be energized to the challenge of creating a sustainable future. Artist Peter Erskine believes that our culture is stuck in a quicksand of obsolete ideas and technologies. His mission in the Los Angeles exhibit, Secrets of the Sun, is to bring critical environmental concepts literally into the light. His canvas is LA's Union Station, and his palette is all the visible colors of the spectrum. Just using statistics and using um, scare tactics about the environment doesn't go very far, but I think that when you hit people in the heart with these colors of the rainbow, the absolute natural, profound uh, experience of nature, then people are moved from their very core, and when they're moved from their core, they can be motivated to see the possibilities of light. As an artist, um, I'm interested in expanding that to the emotional level and to use the emotional impact of art in the most fundamental way, using this fundamental quality of light to hit people in their very core. So people are responding way deep down in the reptilian brain. Erskine focuses pure sunlight on various symbols of environmental crisis. In each case, he offers solar energy and sustainable technologies as practical solutions to the crisis. That means uh, thinking differently about energy, using energy in a way that supports nature rather than killing nature. It means renewable energy rather than uh, fossil fuels. Uh, in terms of um, uh, pollution, it means um, not even using things that are going to pollute, not even inventing things that, that pollute. You know, there's two big ideas in Secrets of the Sun. One of them is that all life is solar powered. Another one is that everything is connected to everything else. When people come into the exhibition, they have their hands stamped with each of those uh, themes, and they go through and they discover how in the exhibition that those two themes are actualized for them. And then they put on a white uh, jumpsuit, which allows them to become a canvas for the solar colors and also a symbolic of the protective clothing that children have to wear in Australia and New Zealand when this uh, hole in the ozone uh, opens up and they have to protect themselves from ultraviolet radiation. So we're now in the solar garden of the 21st century. We have photosynthesis, which has been going for a couple of billion years. And we have photovoltaics, which have been going for a couple of decades. These are running the entire uh, exhibition. The electricity for the show is generated here. The heliostat is the mirror that uh, reflects the light through a, uh, onto a target of mirrors which then reflect uh, into the darkened rooms and onto prisms to create all of the, the solar colors that we have. And we have a solar powered ice maker down here and uh, that is um, not plugged into anything except a long extension cord to the sun and creates 120 pounds of ice a day. One of the most miraculous physical examples of solar energy that, that I can think of. All natural systems are in decline right now. And so this, this car is a metaphor for our pushing technology past the limits which nature can produce. So we're running into problems of mass species extinction, global warming, ozone depletion. This is an old form of technology, fossil fuel technology. Outside we have hydrogen cars and electric vehicles which don't pollute. They don't create a global warming. They are sustainable. They're powered by the sun. So it's not the human brain that's the problem. It's the old 19th century knowledge that we have, which says that a tree isn't worth anything until it's cut down. Another element of Erskine's interactive exhibit is the spectrum vapor chimney room that contains two of the most essential elements for life on Earth, pure sunlight and pure water. Water vapor is emitted from stacks symbolizing power plants. Oil is heavily subsidized. Nuclear energy is almost totally subsidized by the government. And we, uh, and yet solar and renewable, which are extremely um, healthful and, um, and sustainable, have virtually no support. Erskine's art is a practical demonstration of the potentials of solar energy. Yeah, everything in the ex exhibition is solar powered. All the sound, all the motors, that are turning the prisms and the subliminal rate, the computer that's um, programmed the heliostat, the motors that turn the heliostat are all uh, solar powered. So that it's like a theme park that was dropped down from the sun on a very long extension cord and it can be pulled up without having any effect on the environment. 
The photosynthesis room reminds us that solar energy is the basis for life on Earth, powering the planet's climate. We're in the middle of the greatest mass extinction since the dinosaurs, and we could lose, it's estimated, up to 25 to 50 percent of the species on the planet in the next 50 to 100 years. Erskine's mission is to open up people's minds with pure colors and symbols, then to offer those open minds important ideas. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Americans use twice as much energy as Europeans and Japanese. We use 25 times more energy per person than Chinese, one from Al Gore. What we do for the Earth's ecology in the next 10 years will probably determine the course of nature for the next 10,000. And that's what this show's trying to do, is trying to galvanize people into realizing we're at this amazingly poignant moment in history, and we need to jump in the right direction. To be able to walk inside a rainbow and to have that profound experience of nature, it does shift people's values, it does shift people's thinking, it gives them a new vision of what's possible. And if we do that, then we've done a lot. Just open the door a crack, a little bit of light in, and the room is entirely different. The view is entirely different.